Today I'm going to talk to you about why for me, having less has proved to be more. I'm talking specifically about guitar pedals and actually why over the past 12, 18 months I've gone through a journey uh, where I've got over my gas, my gear acquisition syndrome and I've started to realise that actually having less stuff is giving me more options. Before we begin, what is gas? <laughs> I'm sure that resonates with a lot of you watching this video. Before we dive in, if you do like this video or any of the other videos we've got up on our channel, please do consider giving us a subscribe. It started out as it does with a lot of people with a tuner, an overdrive, uh, I think I had a, a Line 6 DL4, and that's where the interest really took hold. A couple of years later, I had a pedal train filled with every pedal that I could find. I got really OCD about my board, I had to have no gaps, I had to have my cables looking really clean, everything being perfectly aligned uh, with all manner of um, effects from all different companies. This got even more serious when I entered into the world of boutique pedals. I suddenly realized that there were companies out there taking what was on the market into new and exciting areas. This desire was stretched further by the great channels here on YouTube and social media that demoed new pedals in what seemed like every other week. I remember hearing about Chase Bliss Audio for the first time been amazed at the team over at Meris and what they were cooking up. I spent a lot of time watching Coffee and Riffs, uh, which is a mini series over on the Old Blood Noise Endeavours YouTube channel. If you haven't seen it, go and check it out. On those videos, you just saw so many different pedals, so many different brands. And to me, it was like a kid going into a sweet shop, all brand new, all exciting. And to me, just a world of opportunity. So I did what seemed to make sense to me at the time, or the most sense, which was just to go for it and dive, dive head first in. It was so much fun hearing the buzz about a new pedal that was coming out and then watching the videos, reading the reviews and then putting my order in and finally getting it through the post. And it became a cycle where barely had the pedal arrived and I'd opened it and put it on my board and had a play. Then the next video will be out about the next new brilliant video that was about to be released. For the most part, the pedals were more complex than previously. And in most of those cases, what that meant was that to really peel back the layers feel at home with the pedal, really take advantage of everything that it can offer you. You needed to spend weeks and months um, experimenting, probably reading the instructions, which isn't something I'm great at. And as time went by, I did that less and less and less because the reality was I was too busy thinking about the next pedal. The more obscure the purchases became, then the less usable I found them in a band environment or a live environment. And they just increasingly felt like a really expensive, guilty pleasure. It came to a head one day when a friend asked me what one of my new pedals did that I posted, I think on Instagram. And the reality was I didn't really know. I knew, but I hadn't invested time in it. I hadn't experimented. And, uh, and I realized I just spent a lot of money, I think about 400 pounds on a pedal that I didn't really have any intention of using. I then stumbled upon a video of one of my favorite uh, pedals ever, uh, or so far at least, the Strymon El Capistan and watching the sound on sound looper option and functionality that you've got within the pedal. And I was equal parts excited at the new functionality that I'd found out about the pedal and horrified that I'd owned the pedal for two years, thought that I'd fallen in love with it, but never once had read the instructions properly, never once had really delved into the full capability of what it could offer. It made me realize that my behavior had become more about some form of dopamine rush of seeing a pedal, purchasing it, getting it in, getting the package, unboxing it, than actually the whole point of it, which is to get these pedals as tools of creativity. The more that I got, the less creative I was becoming. Having cycled through a lot of pedals during this time, possibly hundreds, I decided that enough was enough. And I asked myself one simple question. Of the pedals that I had at the time, which would I want to keep forever? I instantly decided to sell four pedals, all of which were really cool in what they did, uh, none of which since I've sold those pedals has made a slightest bit of difference to, to my life, my creativity. And I noticed immediate benefits such as I just had fewer pedals on my board. There were fewer things that could go wrong. I had fewer cables interconnecting all my different pedals. My pedal board just weighed a lot less, which was great when I was moving between rehearsals or gigs. And I didn't carry that underlying guilt or shame, I suppose, that I didn't verbalize to anyone, but was somewhere at the back of my head about owning all these pedals 
only probably 50% of which I was using at any one time and, and really truly understood. I started living by a one out, one in policy, meaning that I wasn't gonna not buy new gear if it was something that I thought was really worth the investment, but in order to buy one, I had to sell one. And that's something I've been doing for the last three years to really good effect. However, the biggest byproduct of reducing the number of pedals on my board is that I've almost become an expert in the pedals that I do own. Not only how to use them in isolation, but which pedals combine well with each other to create unique sounds. So that's my experience over the past 10 to 12 years. Don't get me wrong, I love guitar gear, I love effects pedals, and I'll always be a fan and always make purchases. But it's brilliant to be able to watch pedal reviews without having that nagging desire to buy that pedal, knowing that actually in making that purchase, it could make my experience and my creativity worse rather than better. I mean, just to give you an example, if we just take a quick look. Oh, let's go down here. So this is my board right now. Uh, let's just get a bit more light. This is my board right now. And you know, these wires and gap, even these gaps seeing Velcro years ago would have absolutely freaked me out, uh, which is ridiculous, I know. Seeing the cables underneath there, you know, I would have had to have a total uniform um, pedal setup utilizing the whole board, or otherwise I felt like, I'd, I'd, I don't know, somehow I'd failed. But the reality is this looks probably the messiest, probably the messiest board. Oh. Go back, sorry. Ah, there we go, sorry. So yeah, I've got some pedals on there which I will never, ever, ever take off my board. Stereo output, I've got fantastic amp mod sounds coming out of that um, with really high class delay, reverb, overdrive and fuzz. And at the moment, for where I'm at, that's, that's all I need. In my case, less is definitely more.